In this movie, we'll look at one more important background concept before we dive into the actual speech sound system of English. Since we'll mostly be dealing with the phonemes of English, we should start by defining this basic term that's used throughout the study of phonetics and phonology. A phoneme is defined as the smallest unit in a speech system that can determine meaning. This doesn't mean that an individual speech sound will have a meaning. Remember, when I say it doesn't mean anything. But if I say at, that means something. And if I use the h sound and say hat, then it means something else. In other words, the presence or absence of h makes the word mean something different. It determines what the meaning of the word will be. Similarly, if I say spat, that also means something different from at. But notice that what makes spat different from at is two units. It's s and p. Because there are two units, we can't say that sp is the smallest unit that determines meaning. Instead, we have to look for individual sounds that can change meaning by themselves. So we could look at sat and notice that it's different from at. And this can tell us that s is a single unit that determines meaning in English. And we can look at pat and notice that it's also different from at. And so this tells us that p is another single unit that can determine meaning in English. So when we find a single unit that determines meaning in a language, we call that unit a phoneme. In most cases, the sounds that are phonemes in English won't surprise you. They're the things that we've been taught to think of as sounds. Where it gets more confusing is that many of the sounds that we actually produce have subtle differences. For example, listen to the final sounds in these two productions of the word back. 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 Can you hear how in the first production I gave that last sound a little bit of a release? You could actually hear the end of the sound. In the second production, you didn't hear that release. In fact, I didn't release that sound, so you never actually heard the end of the sound. But you still understood the word to mean back. This is an example of how you can produce a word with different actual sounds that still means the same thing. So at the phonological level, which deals with meaning, these two productions can be considered to be the same, because they mean the same thing. But at the phonetic level, which deals with sounds as they're actually produced, we want to recognize what we can see and hear, that those two sounds are different. So we call the first sound a released k, and the second one an unreleased k. These two phonetic realizations are considered to be part of the same phoneme, which we consider to be this. In other words, abstractly in your mind, the word back ends with this phoneme. And when you go to produce the word in reality, you sometimes will say it with the released k, and other times you'll produce it with the unreleased k. The phoneme is the same, though the phonetics might differ. Some of the examples of sounds that are the same phonemically seem much more different from each other at the phonetic level. For example, think about the t sounds in the word top compared with in the word pity. In top, it sounds pretty much like you would expect it to, but in pity, the t sound seems much more like a d sound than it does like a t sound. In fact, it's a little different even than a d sound. It's a sound that we refer to as a tap, because the tongue makes a very quick tap at the top of the mouth. In fact, this tap isn't really related to the d sound at all. In this word, English speakers think of the sound as a t sound, even as they regularly produce the sound as a tap. In this case, the t sound in top and the tap sound in pity are both realizations of the same phoneme, which we represent this way. So, if we have a difference in meaning between words that involves only one sound, then those sounds are defined as different phonemes, because phonemes are units that determine meaning. So because pat and bat 
mean different things, and the only sound difference is between p and b, this tells us that p and b are different phonemes in English. The convention is that sounds that are being shown as phonemes are placed inside slashes, while sounds that are being represented as phonetic units in someone's speech are placed in square brackets. Phonemes should always be thought of as abstract units, which exist in the mind of a speaker. Just as we saw before, these units are never spoken themselves. Instead, they're representations in a speaker's mind that are interpreted by the language system before they are eventually produced by a speaker in the form of some kind of a phonetic realization. More on the relationship between phonetic realizations and phonemic representations later. First, we'll look at the phonemes that exist in English.